What is going on, my beautiful people? Happy Friday. Happy WandaVision Day. You already know what the vibes are. Just getting my just taking a sip of water. Gotta stay hydrated out here. We are back with another fabulous episode of the RPD show. Um thankfully, people keep wanting to come on the show and I get to talk to them, and it's just so much fun. But today on the show, I'm joined by a very talented individual. He goes by the name of Mike Squires. Some may know him as a director shooting music videos. Uh, some may know him as a record producer. Some even know his work from a photo- as a photographer. He's toured the country and done you know ph- ph- photography and uh, videography type stuff. And he's a ha- he actually just released a book, which is really cool. And he he's uh, he works alongside an artist as well, handling his business. They were actually on tour in the middle of COVID. So um, it, it's just going to be a fun conversation. This dude is like the ultimate hustler. But without further ado, please welcome Mike Squires to the RPD show. What, what? We're bringing him in right here. Mike, what's happening, man? What's good, my guy? How you doing today? I'm great. It's Friday. You know, life is good. No complaints feel that man how are you doing i'm good man i've just been grinding non-stop i'm a little tired today but i'm about to get a little pep in my step for this dude i, I appreciate <laughs> i appreciate that and the effort i mean you definitely don't sound tired you sound like you're full of life and energy so i'm a method dude i'm going into it full energy man i have to but after this i think i might go i might go crush a nap <laughs> I, I love it this is this is cool though because like i feel like we've known each other for like a while yeah but we've never really, we've never really talked or met or anything really no it just we met through some mutual friends and it was kind of just like a you know a mutual respect from afar and now i'm, I'm stoked um that we actually you know kind of get to talk and i guess i'm hella excited fun. dude i really appreciate you having me too man absolutely i mean you're you have a, i feel like you have a hell of a story and we'll definitely get into that so um oh yeah dude i right before uh, oops all good. I'll actually like put my phone on do not disturb. <laughs> it's 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 always the last. It's literally the last thing I'll do. And sometimes I'm, um, what do you call it? I have to since I record on my computer, I sometimes forget to turn it off and sign out of iMessage. But um, I know, dude. I like I. So I've done a few podcasts this week because I kind of made like a little like PR week for me, or that was like my goal. And uh, on the first one, my fucking, uh, my FaceTime, I never actually signed back into my FaceTime since the last one, so we're good. But um, yeah, dude, my FaceTime started going off in the first one. I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. But I like kept calm, like no one saw it, but I just was like clicking like out of it. Cause it was bla- like, you couldn't hear it cause it was blasting in my headphones. So I was like, just sitting there with it, like blasting full volume. And I'm like, let me get out of this. Dude, it happens. And that's what I love about the podcast space. Like people have told me like, sometimes stuff happens in the middle of the show and they're like that that's what makes it seem real and it's not scripted you know mm. so I, a fun- are you a funko pop collector i am yeah i it's kind of hard to see because the light but i have a uh lebron james one i have damn a, that's fire dan lee from thor ragnarok that's fire oh Rock. is that the i think i have that one too that's the fucking iron man where he's like on his knees no it's not oh. That's uh, Spider Man. Actually, he's, okay. on, he's on his phone and he's like kind of, um, uh, you know, scratch. And then I have uh, Bro Thor from Avengers Endgame, just because he's that was funny. He's all fat. Dude, I have way too many pops, dude. I have like a hundred, like a hundred fifty. No yeah, I, I want to get like a whole shelf for them so I can just display them. But like, I I don't know where to start. Like, I, I all I have is Marvel ones. I want to get DC. I want to get. So the random stuff, we just moved to this new house and uh, we have like in the house, there's like a shelving against like all the walls up top. So like along like our entire house, there's like just Funko pops like all around everywhere. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Is it more of um, just super random? There's random, like, not, it's not really like a theme to the collection. It's just like, yeah, oh. just yeah, it's kind of just whatever we're feeling, you know, so it's definitely like just random. <laughs> What's uh what's your favorite one that you have if you could pick and it's probably hard but 
Oh, you know what? My girlfriend managed to get Johnny Bravo and Dexter. And those oh, that, are, that's, that's fire. Yeah. Yeah. And so those are like really cool. We also have Danny Phantom too. If there's a Timmy Turner one, I'd be pretty stoked. Dang. I bet you that that one's hard to get your hands on. Yeah, um, dude. Wh- where are you at nowadays? Are you in Connecticut or where? Yeah, I'm still in Connecticut. Is it still daytime for you? No, I, I, I live in Buffalo. So like I'm. Okay. That's what I thought too. It, like your lighting is really good, dude. It looks like it's like sure sort of daytime. Oh, well, no, I have two like photography lights. I bought them on Amazon. They're like $60 total. Just, oh, damn, dude. I want to have like the, I wanted to have the good light. I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, production, but (laughs) no, I I just, I bank on my, uh, my friggin' iMac light. Like, if I was to like full screen this, like, it'd be so, I like keep like a white friggin' thing open because that, like, see how much darker it just got when I did that. And then, you know what I mean? That's, that's a (laughs) cheap little trick, you know? Thanks for yeah. putting it on. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm always trying to learn. Um, but let, let's get right into it, man. I mean, uh, I kind of gave you a little intro right before I let you on, but I was saying, you know, some know you as a director, some know you as a producer, some know you as a photographer, you know, as, yes. you, know you just put out a really cool book. Um, and Thank some you, know man. you as a, uh, you know, artist. Well, I guess we could talk about your relationship with, um, is it pronounced Pimo or is it? It is Pimo. Pimo? Pimo? Okay, dude. I didn't want to yeah. botch that. No, it's all good, so, dude. It's so it's all good. You're like a, 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 you know, a jack of all trades, you know, kind of it seems like you kind of, whatever you dabble into, you just excel at. And when you're set, when you can't, when you mentioned earlier that you're grinding, I'm like, dude, probably tackling a bunch of projects he's working on. So. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, it really is insane. Like I, and I feel like I'm working harder now than I ever have at least, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I actually, I was talking with, well, for this to have, you know, Trent who, yeah, he kind of sparked the idea. I'm like, Oh, of course. I, you know, like I, it, I need to get more organized. Cause there's like a list of people that like, I just know they'd probably be down, but like, is it the right time? But he was like, yeah. ask him and you were like, for sure. So yeah, but dude, he, uh, we were talking and he, um, I pulled up your 2021 goals. So we're going to definitely talk about those and see <laughs> yeah. where you're at with that. But um, I don't even remember what I typed. So hopefully we're uh, a lot further. Uh, shoot. I, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to. No, no, no. It's good. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, it's good. I need to, you know what I mean? I should be like, honestly, I should have that printed out right here. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, I'm curious. I feel like I've made progress. I hope so. Cause we're getting, we're getting into, we're two months in now. Right. Yeah. Almost That's- getting to the third. Wow. It's, I mean, time, dude, I, I've moved around <laughs> a lot of my life and it's, it's, it's a process, you know? So, um, but I, you, you kind of have a story, you know, hell of a story. I mean, and resume, like what are, I guess if you could give you the, the origin story of your, of who you are and kind of what inspired you to get, you yeah. know, get into so many different fields, I guess. Yeah. So I always was, always was doing like video work. So even since I was like young, like middle school, like I just was like doing like comedy skits, like fun video school projects, whatever it was. And then when I went to high school, uh, this is where I actually met Pimo. Someone was basically like, Oh, you do videos, you make music. Boom. And then I ended up working on his first mixtape in like 2012. And I like kind of was like executively producing it with like very minimal, you know, beginning Mike Squire's production on there. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know the idea, like around that time, 2012, I always wanted to be like the dude that was kind of like the one-stop shop where it's like, you know, we could work on a song and get it. Like if you came and worked with me today, we could get the song done. I don't mix or master, but we could get sent out, get it back and then go shoot the video for it. You know what I mean? So it was kind of how I wanted to be since the beginning. Okay. I, I respect that a lot about you. I think it's just very, it's very cool. Cause I mean, especially, uh, <laughs> we're clear. We're clear. <laughs> when, like what, I mean, when you would uh, travel on the road, it's like, you kind of have to be that type of person. Cause it's just, you don't know what's going to go wrong. And the more, you, yeah, the more you can do, the more of an asset you are. So, um, that's, that's, it's just amazing. Um, Pimo, your, your relationship with him, that, that started what, in like high school? Yeah, dude. So that's like when we started like working on stuff and, you know, like he took like a few years off after high school and I was like, bro, like you need to get back to it. 
And then friggin' around 2016, we started hit like, you know, like a rebrand, a new rollout and almost like immediately like things popped off. Like, and I guess it's in retrospect, like it's not like huge, huge, but it popped off enough where it's like, okay, this could actually like work and be a thing. You know what I mean? Cause like our first like release, like, and this is like 2016, like we got like 10,000 views, like first week, like, on a first thing like that, I don't know. It was like a pretty big deal to us. So, and then, you know, things just kind of like dominoed into the, the next, we just kept releasing songs. And then a year later we released uh, our song come home, which ended up being like a huge success for us. Even to today, it's like still crushing it streaming wise. And uh, I mean, that song alone has like pretty much like funded a lot of like our careers as far as like making music and stuff like that. That's amazing. I mean, and not only to get that off the ground, but to do it, but you know, one of your best friends that you, you both kind of came up together. So yeah, dude. Yeah. And I really feel for you guys though. Cause you know, you, I, you guys were really starting to build momentum and then, you know, you guys were doing like your first two, I mean, you toured before with like other people, yeah. but you guys were doing your first like official tour together with, um, well with, uh, Michael Garmany who's in, hold, yeah. up, hold up in Greaves love love mike and you know his crew the great people and obviously yeah, they got canceled in the middle and it was just I like know. man <laughs> what, what, what was it like i mean i guess since it's relevant with covid and all but yeah what was it, what was it like being on the road and the, like and having on this, this on, being on the sinking being on the sinking ship um yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um you know it's like it's crazy because like i think when you're out on tour like you're just overly positive already because like you already know that you're going to be dealing with situations that may or just may not be ideal. So you, I feel like at least for me, like I overcompensate sometimes like with being like extra, extra positive. So it's like, you know, it's like all these venues are shutting down. And I was like, no, we'll be fine. We'll be good. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm, I was like being extra positive, but it wasn't until I received a phone call from Watsky because I was about to leave that run and head on a run with him that he was like, oh yeah, dude, I got to pull the plug in this tour. Then I was like, oh no. Like, so like, I was just like, it's crazy. Cause everyone was like waiting. We actually had, we had a bandwagon. So we actually like that tour was definitely one of the more like luxury tours I've been on for sure. So I like got off the bandwagon. I made that call and I like, was talking to Watsky and I like went on back on the bus. Like, I'm just like looking at everybody and it just dead silence. I just went to the bathroom and cried. Cause I was like, damn, like this tour is going belly up too. So I don't know, dude, it was like, it's definitely like a pretty hard thing. I think what killed me the most, like, was just like, dude, we put so much work into it. And it was like, for Pimo's like first tour, I was just like, oh no, dude, it was like the ultimate, like bad luck, Brian, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, you know, gets on tour, uh, forget, like gets on, gets on first tour, global pandemic, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like, so you can't make it up, but the thing is like, we're all, we're not people to get like knocked down and stay down. So it's like, we will get back up and you know, like as soon as touring's back, like I just know as far as the touring goes, I'm more hungry than ever. I'm sure if he's, the feeling is mutual with him. Like I'm sure he's just as hungry as I am to get back out on the road. So we've already talked, we already have like some talks about like getting back on. We just, it just needs to like, we just need to be able to tour to like really have that conversation, you know? So COVID has to like, you know, chill out. <laughs> Basically got to get the the green light from the yeah. thing out of your control and then it's, you're back at it. So, I mean, I feel for you. I mean, you, uh, I mean, I'm sure it was such a bummer cause you know, you're missing out on, you know, income and oh yeah, I'm doing something that you love. I mean, what really hurt the most for me, it was just like, you're being stripped of something that you, you know, you love doing and it's not even in your control really. And it's just like, it was just such a gut punch. You know? Yeah, so. dude. It's, it's definitely, I feel it, dude. And so Watsky's tour was just about to happen too, like, quote unquote, like it was on the books, like for this, but obviously, you know, COVID's not done. So he was scheduled for the fall, you know? So, I mean, who's to say like where COVID's going to be, but I mean, at least having it like scheduled makes me feel really excited excited that like you know I think and his mentality is like you know I think he's just going to keep pushing it back till we can do it and I think as of right now like who knows when we're going to do it but when it does happen I think those shows are going to be like insane just because of like you know like 
so far we're on we're on pushback number three on that tour you know what i mean wow. so it's like you know what i mean so we'll see you know what i mean yeah i think whenever live music does come i think it's gonna be insane huge. it's gonna yeah. be like you know just the, it's gonna be the floodgates and for people that do want to go it's just gonna be you know it, it'll be i'm just very intrigued to see how it everything plays out just because the demand will be there or if it's going to be i don't i mean it's going to be Who there knows? But like, yeah it, it's it's such a question people mark. are going to be people are going to be afraid people like yeah. you know what i mean so i mean it's one of those things you're just not going to know until you go <laughs> yeah i mean i we'll see but yeah I, th- things seem to in a positive note think things seem to be moving up slowly but surely so you know getting better but it's just it's going to be a, just a mental block that people get you know have yeah to do. um go go you know t- it's 2021 it's a new year um we're gonna talk about some of the goals that you have yes I, dude. See, I just want to see where you're at with them <laughs> so your first one was to launch a youtube channel have you I done did that? that i've okay. done that dude we're two videos yeah. deep i got the third release coming out soon so that's been done it's it's been launched and uh i just got to keep it alive now <laughs> that's that's the hardest part i mean that's I, yeah. I feel that man it's um pimo x mike squire's album is that, that a- could we have a few songs done we definitely have a few songs done we don't have like we have a lot well you know what we're sitting on a lot of music but i guess we're trying to figure out what quote unquote is the album you know so i mean there could be an argument that we do have an album but in my head it's not like done, done until i like we're done done with that one like that one could be better we could be stepping up on that one a little Okay. I mean, it's, but, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's early. Motion. It's yeah. in motion. It's in motion. So it's not that it's like been ignored. We just got to figure it out. Okay. Uh, di- direct shoot and edit more videos. I've done that dude. Friggin' the first two weeks of this year, I shot and directed more videos than I did in the last two years in the first two weeks, right off rip. Damn. So, Crushing it, bro. Yeah. No, I'm excited on that. Um, release a producer project. It's coming out yeah the single so they kind of double a lot of these double up because it's like the two releases i have for my youtube channel are both songs that i produced and directed videos for and one of those releases at least is going on the producer project but that project's like really done like to cover art and all so that wow. one's like really done yeah uh right moving on to the next one release the producer drum kits i have one of the drum kits almost done and i have the packaging for it so i do have that i just don't know when i'm going to release it. i'm trying to figure out like what a good time is okay so that, i mean so it's the it's the the engine has been ignited so yeah that one that one's a good one though i think i think we're closer to done than not on that okay i'm i'm just going to keep going here release lightroom pre, uh preset pack haven't started that okay That's, <laughs> you, have, you have you have you know yeah nine months ahead of you so okay then uh, release beat tape and contest Ooh, so i'm sitting on so many beats i could easily put together a beat tape but i haven't really put too much thought into that one yet but that is something i'm going to do this year and i I think what i really want to do before i start releasing some of those like ladder things is like at least like build up the first things like i really want to get this youtube channel in motion like this next release i have like I, my gut feeling says it should be like a big one, but I guess who knows? You know what I mean? I don't get to decide that. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> to be the TBD. Um, these next two, you, these or these next three you have in parentheses, I'm a try. So I'm just going to rattle them off. Release yeah. hundred songs, get into TikTok, which I know <laughs> you're on and then stop. Yes. My favorite one here is stop being critical on myself. Yeah, dude. So. I've been, I've been really good with the last one because I just forced myself to just not even overthink it. And I just like put it out and whatever happens happens, you know? Cause that's like, that's the stage where I would like get stopped usually just cause like, I don't know, like I do have like a definition of like what I like think things are perfect and sometimes I can get in my own way. So, and I think that's what stopped me in the past, you know? And like, I think that's like, I think being aware of that and like being able to push past that is actually going to help me a lot this year you know absolutely i mean 
I think that's just such a critical thing for everyone. I mean, I I'm guilty of it. We, we get in our own way and then it, it kind of slows you down and it's, it's not a fun feeling. So I'm, I'm really happy. No, it's the worst you're, dude. <laughs> you're, you're just pushing along. I mean, shit, dude, I, I got to step up my game. Like dude, this, that's really impressive. Like kudos well, to you. I've been, but, I've been rocking this motto and maybe it's not the best motto, but it's like less think more do. And it's just like, it's kind of simple, but it's like, you know, just like it keeps me just moving to the next thing always, you know, and just like not second guessing myself when it's like, you know what, like I thought this was cool at one point and now I've just had time to live with it and now I'm overthinking it and I'm probably, it's probably still is cool, but I've just lived with it for so long that I'm just like, I just need to get it out there. Otherwise, you know what I mean? I'm just going to keep being super critical of these projects that don't need this type of criticism. <laughs> Yeah. And, and isn't it kind of crazy how, you know, these thoughts in your head will kind of like talk you out of like that you're doing good work or just like, ah, oh, yeah. it's not worth it, it, but it, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. And it's not that I don't, well, you know what? And I have like a lot of belief in myself, dude. I believe in myself so much, but I also like know what I'm capable of. So when I see things that aren't like exactly like quote unquote, like perfect to me, like sometimes I get like a little wigged out, but I don't know. Like I'm getting better with that. Like, cause the thing is like most of the things that I'm super critical of, nobody even notices. Like they, like they won't even know what I'm talking about. I'll be like, yo, isn't that like hi hat, like a little too loud. And they're like, nah, it sounds fine. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, Hey, shut up, Mike. You're, <laughs> you know, Devil, devil's advocate, man. I mean, yeah, it, but yeah, hey, it, it, it shows that you care, you know, that I do invested, that. Yeah. You're, you're invested. So I definitely do care with, uh, with everything, I mean, th this is, I'm sure people listening are probably curious about this as well. Having talked about everything you're doing, T how do you time management skills? Like how, <laughs> how, how is that something you, you'd say you're good at? Or you just, I mean, shoot, dude, like you have everything gets on. done for the most part, you know, I think one thing I need to work on after. So here's, here's how I'm feeling, dude. Um, so kind of going back to the tour thing, it's like, you know, not touring also like it just affects me because like I'm not creating as much because touring has me creating like nonstop. And then also touring is like a huge part of my finances. You know what I mean? That's where I make most of my money and live off of that. So I don't know. I feel like I've had to reinvent myself over the last year. And part of reinventing myself has taken a whole bunch of time. You know what I mean? So like you know, like a lot of efforts that I would have put into like other projects, you know, I'm kind of like taking these, the time and effort and putting it into myself, which I normally have always been like the dude behind the scenes for like other artists. So just trying to build the Mike Squires brand up. And in doing that though, I feel like I spend a lot of time doing that. And it's like, definitely, I definitely could be balanced in my personal life a little bit more. Like I'm definitely a little obsessive when it comes to like, working on like my music craft rollouts, music video, like everything. And, but I really enjoy doing it, but I get, I am pretty obsessive though, like over this kind of stuff, but that's like, it's kind of like my drug of choice, dude. Like I get high off of creating, man. Like I love making music. I love making videos. I just love creating. So I guess that's that, you know? Hey, I mean, better <laughs> to get high off your, creations than other things so i i think so dude <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about creating i'm curious just about like your creative process in a sense is it like do you kind of schedule it out like all right I, or is it pro based on like projects like i mean is it more like all right i feel like making music today i'm gonna be in the lab or is it like okay i, I know i have a video shoot or photo shoot coming up um i think i'm an absolute yeah, I think I'm an absolute madman, dude. I think, like, this is something I'm starting to realize, like, more recently is, like, I don't really have a set anything. Like, I don't really go into date. Like, some days I'll go into things like, oh, I want to get this done today. But for the most part, I'm just, like, dude, I have, like, a whiteboard of a list of things I know I want to get done. And I just get them done how I'm feeling them, you know? So maybe that's, like, not the most, like, ideal and effective strategy. But, like, I don't know. And then also I'm super – guilty of like waking up in the middle of the night just feeling inspired and just getting up and like getting into like a grind of just like working on music or working on videos if like you know what I mean if I just like I'm feeling it so I don't know maybe I'm like a little over the top for that one 
I mean, what, what works for you works for you. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's some people love the structure and the, the organization, but I mean, I definitely could be more structured for sure. Like, but dude, I'm just juggling so much. That's like, by the time, like, I, like, I think my time is best spent just like working on the projects because if I spend time like trying to structure, like it probably will take me longer to create a structure and figure out when to do things than if I just did it and knocked it out. Like, I don't know. That's just like me. Just cause like, I'm just like, if I just hop into it and do it, then I don't have to worry about where it goes. <laughs> I, I dig it. I, yeah. I, I heard about this in, in a book I re- read. It's uh, how to fail at almost everything and still win big. And yeah. By Scott Adams. He, um, he, in, in this book, there's a chapter where he talks about the, like the process, how, and yeah. just kind of like, kind of how you're describing, just like some people are more detail oriented or some people are more free flowing or, but like, don't get so caught up on like what the pro, like what works for you works for you, you know? Yeah. So I, 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 I really thought of that when you mentioned that it's like well dude it seems to be working for you then you know yeah (laughs) yeah i think that's like a great like and i say that with everything and that really applies to like everything in life like what may work for me may not work for you like that's like with building artists dude like if you're building an artist up like what may work and get this artist successful might not work for this other artist even if they make this similar type of music and saying like you know what i mean every type of thing is like different you know 100% 100% it's you know that's what makes I think it, everything fun you know and interesting keeps you on your toes um creative inspirations do you have any or um curious because I mean obviously you have such a wide scope so yeah um I don't know like I guess it changes like nobody really just came to mind I'm really inspired by like people just in general and I know I feel like that's like such a vague like artist statement like um but anyway like I don't know like I like when I see like people just creating like whether anything like anything from like if they're doing videos photos for again if they're like making action figures if they're designing clothes if they're like I don't know I'm just inspired by like all types of like creatives you know and I just like really like to see like things be created on like different mediums and like I don't know it's just like I just like the idea of like there being nothing like making something out of nothing, you know? So I guess anybody who's doing that, like, I'm trying to think if there's like any like particular, none that really like come to mind though. That's really interesting. Cause I mean, a lot of times if you ask someone, they'll be like, Oh, I'm inspired by this person. Or like, this is like my biggest influence. And I, th- yeah. I, th- I think that's really cool that you said that. Cause I feel like I'm sort of the same way. Like, I get really inspired by interactions. Like yeah. you telling me about you and like everything you're working on. It's kind of put in my mind, like, damn, like that's, I feel like I can go a little harder. You know, you know, I have a lot of inspirational people though, that are just like in my direct circle though. You know what I mean? Like people like my direct circle inspires me a lot. And I try to keep people around me that inspire me and like are hard workers and creatives and just like, so, you know what I mean? Maybe it's like, not like, like, uh, like, like an idol or somebody like super famous I look up to, but like, you know, there are definitely people in my circle who I love how they run their operation and how they create and how they move and what they create. And like, I don't know. And I think, I feel like the feeling's mutual too. So it's like, you know, I think like we help push each other in that way too. Cause it's like, we just keep pushing each other to create and just grow and just like, Hey, this is what I'm working on. Like, like, bro, that's fucking sick. Like this is what I got. And then, you know what I mean? We, then we end up working on something together. So I'm very collaborative, I guess. I guess that's like a good, and I, I draw a lot of inspiration from collaboration. That's, that's even more important. I think, uh, I mean, having people in your inner circle like that, that's, I think that's just more powerful than looking up to a celebrity figure or like someone else's work directly, you know, just having that interpersonal connection. Cause I mean, I mean as humans, we're meant to socialize and connect with other people, you know, so yeah, it, dude. when you're able to just, you know, when, when you're on the same wavelength with someone, it's just like, you know, you, you, you could have known them for 30 minutes, but like you, if you connect like that, it's, it's like the most powerful thing ever, you know, if you know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, what, what keeps you like hung, staying hungry though? Like with, you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, cause I feel like you've built enough of a, 
I mean, I don't mean to sound arrogant or in any way, but like you've definitely accomplished a lot. Like, like anyone trying to get to do, to, you know, do, I know like yeah. they would be like, they would love to just be in your position, but like, it's, it's, it's very easy to just, you know, all right, I'm good. I'm chilling. Like I have yeah. this amount of money or whatever. Like I'm, I'm good. So it's like, what, what keep, what, what really keeps you going like to the core? I, mean, I like, you know, and this is something like, cause had you asked me like the, the fucking long hat on that forget ha, like had you asked me this like a year ago i probably wouldn't have been that hungry dude i've gotten more hungry in like the last year because you know i'm really challenging myself to do and you know what maybe covid's partially responsible for this because dude i was cozy as hell dude i like was touring most of the year i was making a great income i'd go home chill out do those projects go back on the road you know what i mean that's that's the schedule I was on. And, you know, I could have rocked that schedule for the rest of my life, made a great income living, hopefully one day raised a happy family, but life had another plan where it's like, uh, you know, now that touring's not there, it's challenged me to like going back to reinventing myself. I'm just trying to do all these different things. You know, like I always wanted to release a photo book and it was something I said I was going to do forever. And I kept putting it off because I was always touring. And then, so COVID actually gave me the opportunity to like do that and get that done. And then I also was able to do this whole producer album. So I think what keeps me hungry is that I challenge myself in doing things that like I've never done before. So it's crazy because I have like videos I've directed legitimately with like millions of views online, but there's something a little bit more satisfying about the video I put out this month that was like a Mike Squire song. Like I produced it. Like I wrote it for again, I wrote it with Pimo and Atlas, but you know, like my heart was into that song and it's coming up on like 10,000 views now. So it's like, it's weird that like, you know, like I know I have videos out there with millions, but there's something about this video with 10,000 views right now. That's like, got me feeling different. I don't know. It's like, I've, I consider this like a huge win. So I don't know, maybe because it's like, maybe because the videos with the millions are like efforts that I put into other artists. And it's not that I don't appreciate those videos. Like, you know, I, I got love for like all the videos I do like with web and, you know, like, but I think it's like special when it's like something that like you created from ground zero and you're watching it build, you know? So I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense or if I'm just rambling. No, and I, I, I completely understand. I, I mean, being a part of something else and it succeeds it's like okay that's great like you know it still feels good but when you're doing it yourself and that's something i've learned with this podcast even though like they're not i'm not getting you know i'm 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 not these numbers aren't the greatest but like yeah just seeing it and seeing that that many people care it's kind of like wow like that's that and that's that's inspiring that that that's feels it. good you know yeah so i i totally get what you're saying i mean it's just it's it, it, it's it's more impactful to you you know um but i guess, I guess you kind of already answered my next question i had for you i was going to ask you your favorite video you've ever directed yeah because i'm into film and movies and all well, that but i don't know if the video like so i get like i do love that video but i don't know like if i because i kind of i don't know what my favorite video i directed is like oh i'm trying to think of you know it's crazy because i'm sure i have a few different favorite videos for different reasons though like I did this video, like this never going to die video with abstract. And, you know, I like love that video. I love how that video came out, but it's also one of my favorite life experiences. Like just going to Wyoming, riding around, like with him, we went up like the gondola to the mountain, like, you know, just a bison in the road. Like, I don't know, that video was just like, you know what I mean? So like that video is just attached to like one of my favorite life experiences, you know? So you know, I, I have love for that video. I'm trying to think of like effects wise, like, I don't know, like I have like, just before I say this next thing, I I don't do drugs. I don't like, I don't do drugs, but one of my favorite videos I've done is drugs in the suitcase with Webby. And I just think it's because, you know, we were quarantined, like it was the top of COVID. It's just like the most ridiculous time. Like, you know, like everyone's like in their like little pods the, and, you know, and like Webby and I like just happened to like, we were just like one of the first people we saw during COVID and uh, we just set up a green screen in his backyard and kind of whatever happened happened. So I don't know, there was some kind of, you know, I, I love, 
I don't know. I guess I got love for all these videos for like all different reasons. So it's not necessarily the take me home video, but that video is like the video I dropped. Like, I mean, it's like more personal to my life. So, you know, I have like love for it for that reason, you know? So it's, I don't know, I guess different ones, different stories. I, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's just, me, you know, it's memories and different each thing holds a different meaning you know that's yeah exactly like, dude i i don't blame you for not really having one in mind it's it's like almost you know it's like asking a someone that's directed many move like, okay, they're all like, maybe, maybe they're like out, out here you know with the, i was gonna say it's like yeah. asking steven spielberg like oh what's the favorite movie you've ever produced or directed and, and it's yeah. like dude i've done like hundreds of them or whatever it's like yeah but i mean it's also like i mean my friend Camila Recchio kind of compares songs and every, like any creative thing to like children, you know? So it's like, you know, like you kind of like made this project. It's like, it's hard to pick like a favorite one. Like, but I don't know, like it, I just enjoy creating and I enjoy them for different reasons, you know? And even projects that like, I may not have enjoyed creating at the time in retrospect ended up loving because maybe it was the worst time of my life putting that project together, but like down the line, it became a hilarious story. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know what I mean? So yeah. I guess there, there's like aspects like that too. It, it, it was, it's like a, you know, it was a, a moment in time that you only get to share with those people that are involved. And Oh yeah, dude. Know, it's, it's, it kind of makes me think of like when, when you tour, it's like just you, the most ridiculous stuff happens and, you just got to keep it pushing though, too, yeah. which is even more funny. <laughs> it's like, like, all right, that just happened. All right, time to go. <laughs> yeah. Too many good times. But the, the, the yeah. analogy about the children, though, that 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 really sparked something in my head. Because it's like, I guess each, by the way you described your projects, it's like each one is raised differently. Just like yeah, the parent with the kid, you know, each sibling is different. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Um with uh, COVID and everything, like how is like your, your mental health been? Cause I mean, I, it seems like you, you're just always might be a I, tough question. Cause it's, it's just like, it's, it was shitty, but I mean, yeah, you, no, I, I think I've been good, but it's like, like I definitely, it's crazy because I probably have gotten a lot, a little bit of like cabin fever, you know, just like being cooped up as much. This is the most consecutive I've been like, and I, I go out, like get groceries and do like the, the basics, you know what I mean? But like, like I've been pretty cooped up. Like, I mean, compared to touring compared to COVID, like, man, they're the complete opposite. So I think I definitely like, especially with some of these projects, like I've been creating, I definitely ha have like a little bit of like, I don't know, like Kanye crazy going on where I'm just like sitting there, like working on like these projects at like four in the morning, just like, you know, and my girlfriend walks and she's like, it's 4 a.m. Go to bed. And I'm just like, wait, I got to I got to lay this down. I got to lay this down. I'm coming. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. Like, I think I'm all right. I think there's probably things I could be doing better. I probably could be working out more. I probably could have a better sleep schedule, but I don't think I've completely lost my marbles. So I think I don't know. We'll see. Stay tuned. You, <laughs> you seem like you're in good spirits, like, you know, so I you know, it's funny that I will say this though. I feel more positive than I have in recent years, you know, because I, I felt that at one point I was actually becoming more of a negative person. And, you know, I kind of saw that happening. I kind of took a step away from everything that I was dealing with there, kind of did a reevaluation of myself. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to be this negative person. The people around me are too negative. I'm not doing it. I'm out. And then I don't know. I just like kind of started focusing on things that genuinely made me happy. And I noticed like myself being more positive and open minding minded towards situations, which is not always the easiest thing to do. You know what I mean? It took me like a little while, but now I feel like like mentally, like I'm actually really in a good place. As like, I mean, I definitely could use some more balance in my life, probably, but as far as just like being like open-minded and like a positive person. I feel like I'm, I'm definitely in a better spot as far as like that. Cause I just think the people around me are really positive too now. So I think that's helped a lot. It goes back to what you said earlier about, you know, keeping that inner circle 
yeah wrong dude. but i i i think part of, i mean I, I feel the same just on the positivity i mean it, it, covid was you know i was definitely had some negative moments and i uh i think part of the reason i stayed positive though is because it's like the only way i felt like i can go is up no yeah dude. happens yeah so i i i think it sounds like you kind of had the similar mindset. oh yeah dude freaking the top of covid dude it was rough because you know, like we only did five shows, but we took, we only did five shows, but we took the entire, we took a financial hit of an entire tour. Uh, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, so it, like, you know, like after like guarantees and like everything, like, you know, like in merch being sold and stuff, we definitely would have been on the up and up for sure. But you know, like it just didn't happen. So it was like, we took like an L right off rip and then just like building back up. But I will say, I took a few W's that countered those L's. You know what I mean? I don't want to talk about just like the negatives. Like I have, and it's crazy because I can't say anything yet about this particular project because I actually signed an NDA where I can't, but I will tell you is that I have, I worked, I, I'm trying to, let me, how can I phrase this? I, there is a part of Mike Squires in something that is coming out on a major streaming platform in the months to come wow and that's i i can't announce it it's getting it's so close like i actually met with who i worked on like was a part of it with yesterday so it was like kind of cool and like we should be getting a trailer soon but that experience like and that happened last year too so they kind of countered each other so i'm really excited for that i haven't really told anybody about that because i always forget about it but now that we're getting closer it's like <laughs> so yeah you know what i mean so there's good things that happen too like i'm not gonna like like don't get me wrong 2020 was a weird year but like i don't know and then i did like i did a uh what's it called i did a live stream with chris webby and pete davidson i basically directed the whole thing with uh like uh my homie pat farley and that was a wild experience too like that <laughs> the that was like a pure like quarantine like it was like the most beautiful disaster. Like it, and to the public, it was a beautiful thing, but like behind the scenes, it was so messy, dude. And it was hilarious, but it's one of those things where it's like, I would never do it again, but it made for some of the best memories, dude. And that was like hilarious, dude. Like, I don't know. It was a good time. So I don't know like you got like, you have to have ups to have downs and vice versa, you know, like, otherwise you're just feeling the same the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you gotta take you gotta take some L's with the wins, or take yeah. some wins from the L. You know, it, it's it's a balancing act. You know, I mean, even yeah. if, even if you only take a couple, it's it's help. That, dude, that's that's awesome. That's a great perspective. And thanks for, uh, I mean, dropping that little exclusive. I mean, not dude, that. Dude, I'm so excited, dude. Well, well, I mean, hopefully, I can say something soon, dude. The second I'm able to say something, I am because I bet that, that <laughs> it just sounds really exciting. I mean, I don't quite have uh i mean it could be anything but it, it could seems, be anything <laughs> it seems like it's big so yeah dude yeah i can't i i literally signed an nda so i can't say anything more yeah. but but the second i'm able to say something i am going to be screaming it from rooftops <laughs> <laughs> i love you should film a video like when you announce it or something i should like cut to this video like where it's just like where i just said that yeah. and then just cuts to me like at a rooftop like screaming, screaming. it like <laughs> yeah maybe maybe i'll do it dude maybe i'll just go on the roof of the fucking house <laughs> yeah, or the mega megaphone you know yeah <laughs> my neighbors are gonna be like yo what the fuck is this kid doing like it's it's not even funnier though because my my neighbors are my landlords oh uh, <laughs> they'd be like what it's like <laughs> and then it'll come time for me to renew the lease and they'll be like i don't know do you remember you remember march bro <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like absolutely not um, yeah dude that's um what what are you well i guess you kind of answered that i mean what are you working on i guess that you're other than the nda thing that you're excited for i guess that you can oh like, dude say. I, mean, I mean i guess kind of everything that was on that list this yeah. youtube channel is going to be friggin like i i'm convinced that's going to pop off you know what i mean i there's nobody who could tell me otherwise i'm going to be just putting because you know what i'm just going to keep doing it until it does you know what i mean and i don't care if something gets a thousand views I don't care if it gets a billion views, I'm going to treat every project the same and I'm just going to keep it pushing. But this next release, 
I'm super excited about. I'm actually about to start announcing it. I'll tell you, I'll say who's on the song. So on the song is, it's like me, obviously, with the production. And then Atlas, Atlas, who's a phenomenal singer and just overall talented dude. Abstract, who you know, you know, and then Pimo. So, and then we somehow managed to get everybody into Connecticut and shot a music video for it. Dude, that's wow. Yeah, Yeah. So I'm really stoked on that. Like, beyond stoked and i'll say that march 12th it comes out march 12th so i'm really freaking i think that's going to be a big one and change the game and just like that's where like the mike squires stock goes like <laughs> like you know what i mean like that's a i don't know i just think it's going to go up i feel like that like release is just like the song is too good it's already proven to be a good song i can't say why yet and i just think it has so many talented motherfuckers on there you know what i mean so it's like I don't know. I'm just like really excited, dude. And I'm glad like we shot a video for it. And I don't know. I just like, I have like a lot of faith in it. And if it flops and you're watching this, I'm so sorry. Like I was wrong. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey I, there, there's, it, I feel like there's only flops and let, and, you know, unless you, you think, I mean, cause I, dude, bro, I mean, you put an yeah. expectation on it, you know, where obviously you want it to like, yeah, be, you know, I'm one convinced. Forever, I'm but- convinced. Yeah, I'm convinced on this one. Here, as long you know what, I don't like putting expectations on this one, but I think of the three releases that I've put out so far, I do have a slight expectation of this being the best performing. Okay. And I, I, I think, and I, I think I'm fair to think that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. I just didn't want you to be too, too hard on yourself. We're like, damn it. It's just like. <laughs> Just like the follow up friggin' yeah. podcast, it's just like me, just like face down on the desk, like, dude, I, I thought that was the one, bro. <laughs> Mike, it's but okay. You, <laughs> you can bounce back. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Well, um, the, those are really all the questions I had for you. I mean, oh, hell yeah, dude. So the 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 my final question that I, I I call it closing thoughts. It's where you get to okay. um plug whatever or you'd say a message you know of whatever or i guess you know just like the floor is completely yours and you say what you want to say you know either all right follow me on the gram or check this out or yeah so say what, say I don't, what i'm say. not yeah i'm not gonna do the follow me on the gram i mean if anyone <laughs> wants to find me yeah. y'all can find me yeah. but what i will say is if there's anybody who's a creative out there who is trying to follow their dreams or aspiring to do something and they can't figure out how to do it The first step is just like, it could be baby steps, like figure out like what you can do. Even if it's a small thing, learn from people who are doing what you want to do and just start to do it. You know what I mean? Because you just don't want to go through your life thinking like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done like, and there's no, like, there's no real like place to start. There's no real, like, it just starts with you. Like you doing something today, like even if you're just researching and stuff like everything just starts with you, like making a move and getting up and doing something. So I don't know. I just see a lot of people who kind of go through life and like, they're like, well, I want to do this. I, I was like, wait, but why aren't you doing it? Like, just get up and at least try it. Because I think you owe yourself to at least try, because if you don't try, then you already count yourself out and it's just never going to happen. So, you know, do something to at least try to get closer to a goal or dream today. So that's, I guess that's my last thought, Ryan. I, I love it. Hey, <laughs> hey, that was powerful, Mike. I, I really appreciate, appreciate you for taking the time. I'm really glad we got to do this, man. Long yeah, dude. You. We got to stay in touch, dude. Like friggin' text me sometime, dude. You have, you have any pets? I have a dog. Yeah. Send me a picture of your dog sometime, dude. <laughs> like, just be like, <laughs> I don't know. Just hit me up randomly, dude. Give me a call. Like whenever. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll get your number and we'll go from there, but. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Everybody, Mike Squires. Thank you again. Thank you, dude. Peace. Peace. All right. (laughs) Sweet.